active killer situations are some of the most chaotic situations you can encounter. Hi everyone, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. With me, the host of the ASP podcast, Mike Williver, and I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Normal, Illinois. MagTech has maintained their high quality during the ammo panic and ramped production to the max. Their ammo is the only ammo I run on the range because of its performance and reliability. I recommend MagTech wholeheartedly. Officers are responding here to a man who is described as an active killer who has gotten into an argument with his roommates and is actively killing people in this mobile home community. Multiple officers are going to respond. We have three different badge camps to watch. Hey, he's on the other side of that shed. He's still up in front, right there. Watch your side. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Shots fired! Shots fired! Back come I got a victim on Linden, uh, just outside 2000 North Linden. I'll see you right here, man. Just sit down for me, okay? Oh, uh. Here, let's lift up your arm. Lift up your arm for me. Uh, Best you can, okay? Okay, it's broke. Thanks. I got you. Hey. Good shot, me. Just take a deep breath, okay? Oh my God! He's going nuts. You know who he is? Yeah. My neighbor. What's going on with him? I don't know. I know. I got it. Thank you. Let, let, let this hand go, okay? All right. Let this hand go. Are you okay? Oh my god. Got the ambulance coming? Yep, they're on their way, man. Tourniquet applied. Where is he? Shots! Shots fired! Shots fired! Around this corner, right here! You got him? I see him right here. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Right there. Just outside 20, 33 Lambert. Go back to the north. Watch your corner, Phillips. Got it. Okay, Get out the guy! Shit. He's all right around the corner. Right there. That's fire still. Not there, Phillips. 
Is he down? Just like this! Just out to like 20, 30 feet away, man. Just out to like 20, 30 feet away, man. Just like down. All right, got him. I'm empty, I'm empty, I'm empty. Three people died in this incident, including the gunman. Uh, no officer was injured in this one, and we have a lot of lessons to think through here. So we're trying something different today, and that is the Ask Podcast is up on Active Self Protection Extra right now with Thomas Yoxel. Yeah, great episode. Uh, Thomas is, you might remember him from the news from 2017. He had a, a run in with a bad guy who was trying to kill a DPS state trooper in Arizona, and he stopped that man from doing bad things. So go check it out, would you? Number one lesson that stands out to me here, Mike, is that these kinds of situations are highly chaotic and evolve incredibly rapidly. Absolutely, I think, I, I'm afraid this whole video may show a lack of training as a group. There's not a lot of cohesion here. I don't see a lot of uh, group tactics being used. And yeah, this, this whole video made me uncomfortable. But at the same time, just so much chaos. You don't know where anybody is. You don't know who the bad guy is. They're hunting here. And actually, this is one of the reasons that I respect the job of law enforcement so much. As private citizens, we run away from this, but these guys have to run to it and solve the problem. So let's think about as they come on here and the first look that they're gonna get, there are a couple problems that we're gonna see here. Number one is that our officer on this badge cam uses his gun to point where the bad guy is and of course points at his two fellow officers. Please hear me, do not point with a firearm. That right there is cause for a fist fight with your buddy. I don't care how much stress you're under at this moment, that's, it's irrelevant because this should be something you've trained to not do. It should be, uh, completely antithetical to your to your being to point a gun at a friendly person. It shouldn't happen. And, and again, well, how do we do this and why do we do this when we don't think about what's in our hands? So you have a gun in your hand, you have to practice those rules of safe firearms handling all the time. Now, of course, what we see here is, is this guy's actively shooting at him. So this is scary, crazy stuff. I do think we see this officer on camera here. You heard him earlier, he's breathing heavy. And I'm sure somebody's gonna say, oh, you know, he needs more fitness. But really, he is highly adrenalized here. And just a little bit of physical exertion will drain that right out of you. If you haven't been in a situation like this, you have no idea how, how stressful, stressful isn't even the word, it's another level of stress where at any moment this guy could pop out of wherever and shoot you. And they know that. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he's probably in fine shape. It's just a matter, like you said, being completely adrenalized. And I, I see a couple of interesting things here that I really like. Number one, I see this officer use the tree for pretty darn good cover. And I actually really like that he stabilizes himself against that tree so that his firearm is in a good spot. And, and I think that that's a good tactic. There, there's two schools of thought. Early on, I was trained not to use the cover to stabilize. Um, I think that's probably incorrect. I think you're right. This is a great use of cover, generally keeping himself out of the line of fire and also using it as a stabilizing uh, Force. Now he's gonna move over to the other side here when the guy actually uh, points a gun at him and starts winging a shot back his way. And we are going to see this guy show up right here. Now, I have measured this on Google Earth. You are talking right here, somewhere in the neighborhood of a 21 to 25 yard shot. And that shot is not a joke, but it is a shot that should be doable for people who are highly trained professionals with a firearm. I know that people watching this, it looks like he's 100 yards away because of the lens and the way, the way it's set up. But yeah, this is a doable shot, absolutely. Uh, I think the fact that he's under stress affects it, but he's got good cover. And if he would just be a little bit more deliberate and get stay on that front side, I think he could have had a hit here. So number one, skill set, right? You've got to have the marksmanship skills to hit this shot. Number two, the mindset that says, I have more skill than this guy does. I'm gonna get a hit before he does. I'm gonna put him down to take the amount of time to be careful enough to get your hit. Because instead he goes back behind his other cover and now he's firing really fast. So you can see his splits here that he's running around point threes. And quite frankly, point three splits on a target that's 22 to 25 yards away is like national and world champion level splits and get A zone hits. And he just doesn't have that skill. There's no way I'm making that shot at that speed. I think. He, like we said before, he needs to be more deliberate. Just be more deliberate. Take your time. Don't slow down, but slow down a little bit. So you again, you want to take enough yeah. time, right? So you want to be careful here. You got to recognize at this kind of shots, and one of the big things that we say in these gunfights, and, and again, a crazy active killer scenario, I'm not trying to give this guy a hard time, but recognize that it, that misses don't end gunfights. And that, that bullet is gonna stop somewhere, and there are thousands of innocent people around here, and you need to get a hit to put this guy down so that the killing stops, and that means you need to be deliberate enough. Other thing I notice here, you might wanna take a little bit of practice shooting with gloves on. 
I got to tell you, uh, I've done with and without gloves. It, it really changes the entire uh, sensation with your shooting hand and your, your support hand. The yeah. grip is different. The the um, the amount of uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, not adhesion, but the, yeah, just the, traction. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. And now he's going to come in and see what's going on with this stuff. I do notice he actually holstered an unloaded gun, a completely empty firearm. We'd recommend, of course, put another magazine in that gun because you don't know that the thread is completely gone. Thankfully, it was in this particular case. Now, let's see our, our second officer that we see on camera here. He's got his gun in hand right now. He's about to holster that up because he's come across a victim. Now, I get it, you know, you see somebody that's bleeding pretty badly, you want to help them, but people are dying right now. I think that you have to just point him to help and then keep looking for the bad guy. We talked about this before we made this video. The best thing he can do right now, this guy's he's mobile, he's able to walk, point him away from the direction of the, of the gunman because right now EMS cannot move in here until the scene is secured. So he needs to get that guy out of there. If he's mobile, tell him, point him towards the direction where the shooting is not happening and get in there because right now, while you're trying to save this guy's life, our shooter could be killing five, six, seven, eight more people. Big deal there. And, and number two, uh, he takes time. If this guy has major arterial blood, you don't have time to put your gloves on, quite frankly, if you're gonna save his life. Uh, number three, it doesn't look like he puts on the tourniquet correctly to me. It doesn't look like he takes the time to get it tight enough to get the wind list and those things. So please don't just carry medical equipment. Make sure that you have the appropriate training to use it. And maybe even again, throw that to the citizen who has an arm that's bleeding and tell him, crank it down as tight as you can, push the wind list down, go that way, and I gotta go solve the problem. This shows, this part here just shows me maybe a lack of training, like you said. I think a lot of this video demonstrates that their training is maybe not what it should be, generally speaking, with the holstering, unloaded guns, and for example, if he's had any active shooter training at all, he should know this is not, unfortunately, you gotta walk past the guy that's bleeding and get, get to work on the bad guy first. But I get that that's difficult because this yeah. is a human being you wanna help. Now, I do note here, I think the officer does a pretty good job of transitioning from I gotta help this bleeding citizen to I gotta hunt a killer. And, and that's a mindset shift. And he actually gets the first hit or first shot towards this guy. And you can see him down here. Again, it looks like it's a million miles away because of the fisheye lens. In reality, it's about a 17 yard shot with a full forward presentation. This is, again, that kind of hit that I, it's under stress. And I'm not gonna say that that's an easy shot, but it's one that you gotta train to hit and be confident you can get. I think this officer here did a commendable job, like you said, of going from rescuer to uh, hunter. And this should have maybe been a hit. Again, I wasn't there, I'm not in the situation, but you'd, you'd like to see a hit right now. A hit right now would have saved a lot of aggravation here in the next couple of minutes. Well, and again, so we're gonna see reloads, we're gonna see having to come all the way into seven yards to get the final hit, to get this guy down. You want him down so he stops killing people. And the longer your skill set, the more you can get that hit from a farther distance, the sooner you end this threat and the less distance, the less threat that it is to you and to your fellow officers. I think these guys are doing the best job they can. Like I said, I think there's some training issues that need to be identified and resolved with this agency. Their, their courage is unassailable. These guys are going after a guy who's actively shooting at people, so I commend them Including them. Yeah, I, I just feel like this agency needs to uh, maybe have a, a close look at the training department, because these guys, I don't think they've been prepared for this properly. Well, and, and again, I think obviously that fence isn't gonna provide cover, but it's pretty good concealment, and, and it takes a lot of moxie to keep moving forward when a guy is putting shots your way every time. They couldn't get the hits at 22. They didn't get the hits at 17. So now they step in and we see the guy again at about 12. So here, here's a lesson from me to you, the farther your skill set, again, uh, you know, proximity negates skill. And so you're giving this guy more chances. So if, but if you don't have the skill set to hit him at 22, you gotta get in closer. Then you gotta get in closer again, get the hit at 12. Everything in their body is screaming, run away from the situation, you right. know, as people, they're thinking about their kids, they're thinking about their wives and all this other stuff. But you gotta recognize here, what's behind our bad guy, houses. These misses could be, could be actually killing people right now. So these are critical misses. And they're, like you said, they're not gonna stop a gunfight with a miss. You're not gonna scare him into submission at this point. He's right. determined to kill people. Remember, grip is the master, sight set the pace, trigger is the servant. And you gotta have the confidence that says, I am better than this guy with a handgun. I am going to get a hit here and I'm going to take enough grip, sights, and trigger to put this guy down. I also think it's a good, uh, uh, you know, advertisement here to get good with a red dot sight or a pistol mounted optic and be able to hit from farther away because when you don't have that skill set, now you gotta close all the way into where we see this guy coming at about eight yards. Now, thankfully, finally, the officer is going to get it. But one of the things that we say all the time, number one cause of reloading in gunfights is missing. And all these rounds, man, give this guy more opportunity to hurt us. 
not for nothing, but I, I don't know this agency's policy on long guns, shotguns, or ARs, but right. man, a, a shotgun AR might have ended this a lot sooner. I don't know why no one has one. I, I Could be they're not issued. I, I have no idea, but boy, a long gun would have come in handy in this situation. And certainly, boy, if I'm going to an active killer, I want a long gun and all my friends to bring their long guns. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I don't know their policy at IMPD. I don't know if they're allowed to have uh, patrol carbines or whatever, but boy, I sure wish we had one here. Because again, we're continuing to, to uh, unload guns and continuing to have to reload. And the number one cause, again, of reloading is missing. You know that dream you had when you were a kid that you showed up for school with no pants on? Right. That's how that feels to have an empty gun in the middle of a gunfight. It's not a good feeling. And the, the reloads here, again, training maybe not up to what it should be. People holstering, you know, un unloaded firearms at slide lock, not, not a good look. And I'm just worried for these guys. And if you watch the channel with regularity, you've heard me say that reloads are vanishingly insignificant issues in private citizen gunfights. But in police officer involved gunfights, they are very common because of the mission difference. Officers chase goblins down holes. They have to pursue and because of that, they end up reloading quite frequently. So all police officers, you need to know how to reload your gun very quickly because as long as it's out of the fight, you are in a bad spot. Now, I'm gonna say another training scar that I see here is that his gun went auto forward and he's still going to run the slide in or, and that's gonna cost him a round. And we've already seen, he needs every round he can get. So again, a thinking man sees the slide go forward and goes, nope, my gun is ready, keep going. When I first started with the feds in 96, we were taught absolutely never use the slide release uh, when you're reloading. Always come over the top, slingshot the slide. Partly because we had this enormous Beretta 9060 Brigadiers that were ridiculous and only held 12 rounds, but also, because the idea is in a gunfight, in a critical situation, you lose your fine motor skills, so a big chunky movement like reaching over the top and grabbing the slide and racking it that way, don't do that. Don't train that way anymore, yeah. please. You were telling me you, you, you actually keep your, uh, your gun hand on the slide release? I do, I actually keep my thumb on the slide release um, and put a little bit of pressure on that. And that's a technique issue. And, and of course, in a modern context, we say, you know, your trigger finger is a fine motor skill. Uh, putting a, a magazine in the magazine well is a fine motor skill. So using the slide stop if available is a fine motor skill that you can learn to do. And, and again, the thinking issue here is the slide went forward when a magazine went in, I have a loaded gun, I'm back in the fight. It's not necessarily the technique, it's knowing when your gun is loaded so that you can get back in the hunt. I also want to note here, thankfully, that by the time he did get back in the hunt, his partner was on it. And okay, let's see that third partner here who shows up and actually does the work to put the threat down. And we really see the same lessons here, Mike, and that is, you know, earlier hits keep this fight at bay. I will note here in this particular one, you want to notice he's got again here about a 14 yard shot that we've measured on Google Maps but he has a partner that is you know, interceding in the foreground, and you gotta be very careful with that. Yeah, he's hard to see, but if you look just to the left where the suspect is uh, on the fence, that's his partner, and I would like to think I wouldn't take that shot. So again, priority of fire says, when you got a partner in the way, he's the one who gets that shot. You don't wanna take that shot, because if we've seen it too often. He decides to take a big, hard rightward step so that he gets a better view, and then ends up in your line of fire, and you end up with fratricide, and we absolutely don't want a blue-on-blue -blue shooting. So that's why one of those things that we say is, wait, I gotta get to a space that my partner is not in the way of my shot. Yeah, it's possible in the heat of the moment he didn't see him, but yeah, that's, that's a sketchy one. So just, just be aware and be very cautious. But again, because he didn't get the hit, the fight continues and now he's gotta keep on this guy and keep moving in and get closer to the threat. And of course you don't want to, your whole brain is saying stay away from this threat, which is one of the reasons that we say you've got to have the high level of skill because you see him shooting back and those are danger not only to yourself, not only to your partners, but every single person. And, and I know we've harped on this a bunch. I hope this video shows you the importance here of having a high level of marksmanship because it's not till the guy closes in till about seven or eight yards that this shot finally puts him down. He's probably had, I'm gonna guess here, a good 50 to 60 rounds come his way at a minimum. And it finally took a hit. What stops a gunfight? What stops a killer is not shooting at him, it's shooting him. Fibs, not Fibsa. I certainly hope this agency's training department has reviewed this video and made some uh, some amendments to their training because yeah, at some point here, any one of these officers could have been shot by him, by another officer accidentally. 
uh, way too many rounds thrown around in a, in a populated area like that. Now, if you go watch the original, there's a whole bunch more here. And, and you see them then try to render aid to the people who've been shot. They have some significant stuff there. But I do want to notice here at the end, notice our officer again has got an unloaded gun in his hand. If you've got an unloaded gun in your hand, you don't know that this guy's not gonna reanimate, show back up, become a threat again. You need to put some beans in the blaster. And he finally does that, and, and okay, fine. Just recognize when you got an empty gun, you got problems. I do think at the very end here, kind of interesting, he's, he, he gets a little casual here at the end and thinks, oh, okay, we're done. I'm gonna you know, uh, pick up my unloaded magazine here because I wanna stow that bad boy. I would have also, yeah, that was, I don't know what sure what's happening there. I, I also wanna mention that I think they moved in a little quickly on this guy. I would have held back a little bit, give it a little bit more time, make sure he's not moving, because there's still a gun in the mix somewhere. I don't think you can see it or not, but uh, again, not questioning their courage. Their courage is unbelievable, but the training here has got to be addressed. So attitude here, just absolutely exemplary. Hats off to them for their courage, for their tenacity, for their willingness and ability to stay in the fight no matter what. The skill set, oh boy, uh, we need some work on that. And again, the longer your skill set, the longer you're confidently able to get that hit, the faster this fight ends. The plan, not a whole lot of communication here, a uh, whole lot of difficulty in doing that. So again, attitude wins an awful lot of gunfights. Good job on these guys for stopping this guy from killing more people. Let's think about the skill set piece and get better there. Mike, thanks so much for the insight. My pleasure.